Hey everyone, it's Hal. Thanks so much for checking in one more time. It is now exactly nine months since my hair transplant. I know I haven't seen you in a while because I actually took the summer off. I went on a little summer vacation. It's been so long since I was able to travel, you know, coming out of COVID and everything. So had a fantastic summer. I hope you did too. Uh, you can actually check out some of what I did and what I was up to over the course of the summer uh, on my channel here. I did a whole playlist of my trip to Barbados. It was absolutely phenomenal. So on the hair front, things have been going really, really well. I'm now officially nine months post-op. And my clinic, which was Hair Upload, Dr. Kamaz and his team, they reached out to me a couple weeks ago just to get an update and a follow-up on how things have been going because I'm about to come up on my one-year anniversary this December. So I sent them some photos, they took a look, we actually had a conversation about my level of satisfaction and I really am very, very satisfied with the way things have all turned out. However, there are certain areas and patches that are not as dense as I would like. Also too, I would like to see the crown a bit more filled in. So we've been talking about maybe going back for a second procedure, I'm trying to work out logistics and pricing and all that right now. But um, you know, if you are like me on the higher end of the Norwood scale, in most cases, a one and done procedure is not really gonna give you the full coverage that you're looking for. I actually had a few consultations before I landed on Hair Upload. And you know, you find some of these clinics that will say, hey, we're gonna do the max, we're gonna pull out everything and get you done 5,000 grafts in one sitting. Uh, for me, that was a little too much for my taste. So I found some other clinics who were like, you know, we'll do it in stages. We'll do the, you know, the first half, we'll kind of build the front line and kind of, you know, fill in the top and then see how things come out and then we'll concentrate then on the backside um, at a later date. So that really did work for me only because I wanted to be sure that the work was not going to be too aggressive, that my body was not going to be able to take it because sometimes your transplant will be rejected if you're being harvested, you know, fully harvested in one sitting. So it uh, looks like I'll be going back to hair upload uh, in a few months. We'll see, but I'll definitely keep you posted and let you know what happens with that. But today we're talking about derma rolling. Okay, so something that I've been doing for a while. I'm gonna to talk to you about what it is, how to do it, and why you should be doing it. Okay, so what exactly is it? So it is a device, something like this. They come in various forms. And what exactly it does, uh, these are actually little uh, steel needles that, there you go, like that. These are actually little steel needles that do little punctures in the surface of the scalp and so you question, why would you want to do that? Derma rolling or microneedling, however you want to call it, there's some scientific evidence of producing collagen, blood flow, and growth factors to the surface of the skin once you make these little uh, indentations and punctures into the surface. I've been using this one now for a while. This is a 1.5 millimeter. Um, I've also, when I first started, I was using uh, same, same brand, but this was a 0.5 millimeter. So I would recommend if you are gonna try microneedling to um, go low and then kind of build yourself up to something longer just to give your scalp and your skin a chance to kind of get used to it of the, uh, the rolling because it does get a little painful if you're just starting off the first time and your head in your body is not used to it. Okay. Also too, there is a, a lot of estheticians, people like that will also use, uh, I have this here. I actually have this kit. It is a microneedling kit. Uh, this is more for the face, you know, so a lot of estheticians will use this um, going over the skin, surface of the skin, same principle more so for fine lines and wrinkles, again, collagen building, growth factors, blood flow, that sort of thing. If you are gonna use it on your face, just know that you will look really, really red for a while until that blood flow sort of subsides then from the skin. But this is another uh, thing that people do. When do I do my derma rolling? I actually do my derma rolling once a week, uh, generally like on a Saturday, like today. And I will do it right after I come out of the shower where there's no product or anything in my hair. So you wanna do it on a very clean scalp, a very fresh scalp. And then you'll just take your roller and just kind of go over it in a direction. So you wanna kind of like part areas of the scalp and just go, you know, one, two, three, four, five to the front and then to the side, one, two, three, four, five, and then on a diagonal, one, two, three, four, five. And I would just do that in various areas around the, um, around the surface of the scalp here. And then once I do that, you're gonna to start to feel this tingling because all of a sudden, all those growth factors, collagen, and blood flow will start to rush to the surface of the skin to repair itself. So a word of advice, if you are going to take this on, I do highly recommend that you do sanitize your roller before and after you use it. 
So every time I do take mine out, I do have a little spray bottle here. I will just spray this alcohol on here, make sure it's good and wet, to make sure it's nice and clean. And then when I'm done with that, I'll do like another good spray and put that off to the side. And then before I store it away, I then take out my uh, rubbing alcohol and then just kind of dunk this in uh, a little little cup and just kind of soak it in there for like a good 10 minutes before I store it away ready for the next time I use it. Also too, if you have any hair bumps or pimples on the scalp, I certainly would recommend that you not uh, dermaroll over that area just because again, you don't wanna in introduce any trauma uh, to that area into those bumps and bring in any sort of infection. That's something you really do not want to do. One big word of caution, do not, and I repeat, do not do derma rolling right after your procedure. That is not the time to start poking at your open wounds, okay? So let's give this at least three months after you've gone through the procedure, after you've gone through the shock loss, after you've gone through the shedding phase. You're gonna wanna start your derma rolling when you're in the growth phase, when you're looking to have all of that strong rejuvenation brought back to your scalp, all of that good blood, collagen, and those growth factors. So don't do this right after the procedure. Wait at least three months once you're well and healed. Another bit of advice I have is that when you do roll is to not apply too much pressure. There's really no reason to really press really, really hard, uh, induce any sort of bleeding because that's really not the purpose of it. The purpose is just to kind of like get those punctures in there. It's not about drawing blood. Also too, when you do, uh, if you do have longer hair like I do, make sure that you do part it and you just do focus on the scalp surface because another thing you do not want to do is get your hair caught up and tangled into uh, the spokes here and then you start to pull your hair out. That's just defeats the purpose. Even though you are cleaning and sanitizing your derma roller each and every time, I do recommend that you do replace your roller every four to six months. That way you're always sure you're gonna be working with some really sharp needles. So there you have it guys, my little video on the derma roller, what it is, why you may wanna do it and how to do it. All right, so be sure to click like and share this video if you know of anyone else who's also on the hair transplantation journey. Uh, you know, we're a whole community here, so the more we can get this knowledge out, the better for us all. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.